Hi, I'm Austin Mitchell from R7C Media. In today's Ask Austin, I'm going to be talking to Rosario, who is an artist in Edinburgh. This episode of Ask Austin is presented in conjunction with Artisan Rico, a marketplace and community for artisans, crafters and artists, taking care of the business side of the creative process. To find out more, go to www.artisanrico.co.uk. So hi Rosario, how are you today? Hello, hello Austin, yeah, very good, thank you very much. Excellent. Yeah, I'm brilliant, thank you. Listen, thanks very much for joining us, I, I'm sure you're a busy man. So you are an artist and you're based in Edinburgh. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what you do and what your style is, etc.? Right, okay, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm uh, Italian but I arrived in Scotland 23 years ago exactly, and I never left. I'm based in Edinburgh. I love this city. It's, uh, well, it's a beautiful city, but also I find that it's very vibrant. There is lots of uh, culture and art going on. I mean, Edinburgh uh, hosts the, one of the biggest festival, if not the biggest festival in uh, Europe, the Edinburgh Festival, which unfortunately, it's not going to happen this year yeah. for reasons that we know. Anyway, I love Scotland. I love Edinburgh. Um, and I am a batik artist. So uh, batik is my media. Okay. okay. Do, you do you want to tell, tell us a little bit? I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know what batik is, but do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, no, 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 no problem. Um, yeah, it is uh, a technique that originated originally uh, mainly in India, but also Southeast Asia. But it, for example, is big in Indonesia, is part of the culture and the tradition of the country. The technique is quite uh, um, particular, very specific. We use uh, tools like this one. These are called chanting. And they are basically drawing tools. We batik artists draw with wax, melted wax. It's quite a complicated process to explain, but if you see it in action, then it makes sense. Basically, the wax acts as a resist. Then we paint on the drawing, and then I let the painting dry. I remove the wax, and then some uh, patterns, effects come up. Uh, oh, the sure. beauty of batik is that uh, yeah you don't you never really know until the end what is your uh, artwork what right. how it's going to be like yeah excellent. so there's this element of surprise yeah brilliant excellent so what made you get into art right okay I, I always like art I was one of these little boys at school who who liked to paint and draw and so it has been always part of uh, of myself of my life then you know you, you grow up and you become an adult and then you do your uh, office job you know and you go on with life and it, i find it's a shame that this creative aspect that i believe everyone has in whatever form you know drawing photography sculpture writings it's a shame that it dies off yeah so luckily in my case it came up again 10 years ago uh, i did a round the world trip uh, I like to travel a lot, mm -hmm. so my art is really connected with my journeys around the world. And I started to paint again, and I spent quite a long time, few months in Southeast Asia, in Thailand, this big batik, um, and uh, that's where I uh, learned even more about the technique. And in Indonesia as well, I have been quite extensively in Java Island. Um, yeah, and I had great master, uh, for training, really. if you like. So do you, you, you mentioned training. Do you run training courses where people can learn how to paint like you, or is it is it more just kind of, you just do your thing? It, it, yeah, it's just doing my thing. Yeah. But interestingly, yeah, no, uh, some people have asked me because uh, about uh, workshop or mm. tutorials. So I have, in truth, I have done it some tutorials, mm -hmm. but informally, not kind of scheduled, you know, out there. Um, but n yeah, not official ones, but with friends, yeah. Yeah, maybe something for the future. For the future, yes, yeah. something that can be considered, yeah. Yeah, excellent. So, um, do you want to tell us about what you enjoy about painting? Uh, 
I mean, obviously, it's 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 a great talent you've got. But what what do you enjoy most about it? Uh, mostly, uh, the the aspect that I enjoy the most is the process. Mm-hmm. It is this well, people who have this creative fire. They uh, the, the, this fire burns when you are actually doing something. Yeah, it's the flow. So uh, probably the most difficult part is to start, but then when you are into it, your entire being is absorbed by uh, this creation and things that comes up one after another. Maybe something unexpected. So the secret is just to keep on going. Um, Obviously, I, I also enjoy uh, the um, finished work. So mm-hmm. it's quite a sense of fulfillment, you know, when, oh, I have done it. And if people appreciate it, you know, it's quite an, a nice sense, of, uh, nice feeling you have. Brilliant. Do you take commissions from people or is it basically just you come up with your own ideas? I, I take commission, yeah. Right. And I work well with commission. So most of my paintings have been sold through commissions, worth of mouth, um, and exhibition as well. Mm-hmm. So these are my two main uh, channels. I like commissions because sometimes uh, uh, they are challenging. It's something that I didn't necessarily think of. Yeah. But I like to have new challenge. And so far, my clients have been uh, happy with the results. Brilliant. That's great. So yeah. for, you, you talked earlier about you traveled the world. I, I guess a lot of yeah. your inspiration comes from your travels. Is that where you get your ideas from your paintings? Or, you know, where, where does it come from? Yeah. Again, um, maybe two aspects. One, definitely from my uh, journeys. Mm -hmm. When I did this round the world uh, trip uh, for one year, I had my rucksack. That rucksack was my home. Mm -hmm. And it was ridiculous because one third of the rucksack was filled with uh, art materials, brushes and stuff. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But this is, you know, this is how the passion works. If you really have a passion, nothing is impossible. It was really an experience for me. Uh, I would when I did this journey, I would paint a batik uh, for each country I visited, and then I posted the artwork back to Edinburgh here, ah. and then I did an exhibition, and it was very successful because it was a way for me to tell about other people, or the impression, rather, that I had, the feelings I had of different countries. Um, so the inspiration definitely comes from that. But another inspiration, as I say, definitely commissions, because I'll just give you one example. One of my clients commissioned uh, the logo of the Motorhead, you know, the rock band from the uh-huh. 80s? Yeah. yeah and, uh, and the logo is a skull, quite scary, you know, with a black background. And this. And I never thought to do a batik about that. Yeah. Uh, it was challenging, but the result was amazing um, i loved it so excellent if people ask me can you do this says okay i'll try <laughs> but it's really really an inspiration and uh, yeah it generally goes well yeah so it, far. It, so that's far. It, it makes you kind of think outside the box as well and um, which is it, always good exactly so you mentioned you display your work do you put on your own exhibitions or do you go to exhibitions with other artists how does that work uh, I have done a, a solo exhibition, probably the most important one was here in Edinburgh with the, the uh, Italian Cultural Institute, which is connected with the Italian consulate and they wanted to promote an Italian artist. I was very grateful. And we put up a really uh, good, it was a solo exhibition. We did a nice opening. Uh, people here don't know very much about Batik, so it was also a good uh, opportunity to do a presentation. We had the video as well, yeah. which was going on a loop, and people liked that. And the exhibition was on for one month, um, and it was great. Apart from that, uh, as I said, Edinburgh is a great hub for yeah. creative people, uh, sometimes even in pubs or, uh, pe- you know, businesses that have space to exhibit, even with other artists, I'm always available. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Good stuff. So in terms of an average painting, so if I came to you and said, right, I want you to paint um, 
Edinburgh Castle in your style. How long would it take you to, to do that from start to finish? From start to finish, it depends also how big it is, obviously. Yeah. Um, and also it depends with my sense of discipline, because discipline is a big thing. You have to really allocate time, but provided I have everything ready, and um, I would say one week. Oh, least. really? That's quick. Mm. So can you start tonight? Yeah, one. <laughs> yeah, but one week is like full. If I have a full time no, weeks, like I wake up. <laughs> I, was, I was only joking. I was only joking. That, that's it's, really quick. I, I thought you were going to say months. But um, yeah. Uh, no, no. One way because once I start, as I said, I can spend even. 10 hours, sometimes yeah. I forget to eat because, you know, I was <laughs> so, just there, yeah. I go back and forward, yeah. Also in Batik, there is also, sometimes you have to wait that the painting dries, right. then you go, go back and, yeah. Yeah, awesome, that's really cool. So, in terms of people want to find out a bit more about you, where can they find you? You're on the, the usual social media channels? Yeah, well, I am on Instagram and Facebook, so I, I have my personal page, but also have the professional uh, yeah. business page dedicated to Batik, which Thank I you. like to feed uh, more. Uh, but really, uh, Edinburgh, it is a capital city, but it also has this sense of community. Once you are getting, you get out there, there is a, a lot about word of mouth. Yeah. Uh, and the people find you that, that way. I haven't experienced as much as I would like more the online stuff. Yeah. I think that's one, talking with my uh, friends art, that are in the artist world, probably sometimes that's a big challenge because you spend most of the time creating, yeah. actually doing the work, and then all the marketing is a bit like 10%, which is not enough at all. So probably that's yeah. something worth to uh, explore more. Yeah, it's it's funny you should say that because it is a, it's a fine line between, obviously you need to do the marketing to get the business in, but you need to create your, your, your product as well. So it is really hard. Um, I know myself yeah. trying to promote the business, you know, it's 24 seven, you're, you're responding to um, messages, you know, you're putting out your social media posts, you're making your videos, or you're, you're, you're painting. So it is really, really difficult, but um, yeah, it's good fun. We wouldn't be doing it if we didn't enjoy it. No, and it's worth it. Yeah, as I said, probably some more attention uh, needs to be put, at least in my case, on that uh, area. But it's, 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 it's a matter of being proactive and yeah. being constant because people are not going to knock at your door if no. you don't know where you are, you know. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Listen, I, I know you're a busy man, so thanks very much for your time. I appreciate that. Um, I'm sure everyone's found that really interesting. So thanks again. Thanks to Rosario for his time today. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you're not already a subscriber, subscribe above and switch on the notifications. Until the next time.